this is a recording of the questions on the Congenital Muscle Disease International Registry. There is a separate video to find out how to begin a registry, but you want to go to www.cmdir.org, and that is the Congenital Muscle Disease International Registry. So I'm going to just quickly, very quickly, go through some of the questions so you know what to expect when you go to register. The first section is about diagnosis, and that's the medical word for the name of the disease that somebody has. So, um, for example, the first thing we want to know is that the affected person um, registered in a different registry, any other registry, so that we would like to interface with other registries, so it's really important for us to know the answer to that question. Uh, and also, what is the affected person's diagnosis? So you can click on any of these answers here. If you don't know, that's okay too. Maybe your doctor told you that you have a congenital muscle disease or congenital myopathy, but they don't know what kind. You can check here if you don't know. If you have this diagnosis here, you want to know what gene is affected, and there's a list of them starting here. Oh, by the way, this is a printout of the questions. The questions on the website will look slightly different, but they're really the same questions. If the que person has this mutation, which gene is it? If you don't have the, either of those diseases, don't m bother about it. Just put not applicable. If you have a congenital myopathy or the affected person has a congenital myopathy, then you want to select if you know which gene it is. If the gene has not been found out yet, no problem. Just check here. Um, also, has a family member been given a similar diagnosis? Here we want to know how the doctor made the diagnosis. Clinical diagnosis means that the doctor just did a physical exam and taking a look and looking at the history of the person, they could say, you know what, I think this person has such and such disease or uh, muscle condition, and then that would be a clinical diagnosis. A family history, maybe you have um, other family members with this disease, so it became very easy to make the diagnosis, um, or that there was a genetic testing done, a muscle biopsy, would have, which would have been a surgery to remove a small piece of muscle, and then they look at it under the microphone, micro, excuse me, under the microscope, or a skin biopsy, where a small amount of skin is removed, and then it's analyzed. That may have been one of the ma methods. You, maybe your doctor never told you exactly how they made made the diagnosis, and they just said, "Oh, I think your loved one, or your child, or you have such and such." Then you can click here if you don't know. We wanted to know for the registry when were the first symptoms that um, you noticed that there was something that wasn't um, typical. And so you, this is uh, what age did that start showing up? And then also what age was the person formally diagnosed? Meaning they got a formal diagnosis from the doctor. And then was there any genetic testing that has been done? This is about uh, creatine kinase blood work. If you know the answers to that, if you don't know the answer, if you have, uh, if you can ask, if you had blood drawn and you know that some labs were done, but you really don't know what was tested, etc., you can always ask your doctor for a copy of those records to look that up. The next section is about motor ability, which is about movement, how people are able to move, and so the first question is about running. Are they currently able to run? They, maybe they could run in the past, but not now, or maybe they were never able. If, by chance, they could do it in the past but can't now, we want to know at what age was that, a, that skill lost. And that's the same type of responses for climbing stairs without a handrail, climbing stairs with a handrail, walking without assistance outside, and walking first without assistance inside, walking with help, this one, sit when placed, that is, if you propped someone up in the middle of the floor sitting, would they be able to maintain sitting? Can they hold their head up? And currently, what is the amount of moving ability that the person has? And what was the, the best ever amount of moving ability that the person had? Does the person use a wheelchair? If they did, when did they start using a wheelchair? Then we ask questions about breathing. So what kind of breathing support they need. They use it at night, during the day, only when they're sick, for more than 16 hours a day. 
I'm sorry I'm going so fast, but I want to get through a lot of this. Do they use um, breathing help, like using a BiPAP machine or a ventilator? Do they have a breathing tube? Um, have, did it start after birth? And pulmonary function tests are breathing tests. So maybe you went to the doctor and they had you puff or cough into certain devices, then that would be a, a pulmonary function test. And we're really interested in this test called vital capacity, which is a measure of your lung function. We'd actually really like to get a copy of these reports. And you can fax them to this fax number. If you're in the United States, it's 310-872-5374. And this is the international code here. You can also email them. If you have them scanned in and you have them in an electro electronic document, you can also upload them right onto the registry website. So these are questions about breathing. Did they ever have a collapsed lung? Questions about that. Trache questions about a breathing tumor, or tracheostomy, any changes in the chest wall, and then also questions about sleep. So there's a bunch of questions here about sleeping. There's a section here, if the affected person is six years of age or older, we'd like them to answer these specific questions about breathing. There's questions about the heart. Have they ever had a heart test called an echocardiogram, which is a nice test that tells a lot of information about heart function, and especially uh, about ejection fraction, which is just, again, a measure of heart function. And so we'd really, if you have a recent heart doctor test, or maybe an old one, if that's the only one you have, then we'd like to really see a copy of it. And you can fax it, or upload it, or email it. Questions about the brain, about the questions about the eyes, was there any ever testing of the brain? Seizures, did the affected person have any seizures? Trouble drooling, trouble with hearing. And then there's very specific questions about the extremities, which are like could be the hands and feet. This is about questions for the fingers, about the skin. Did they have any deformities or changes in the body that were present at birth? Questions about the spine, about question about tight joints and scoliosis, which is curvature of the spine. If there's any questions on the a questionnaire that you don't understand, on the website, when you go up to the top, there's a button, a tab that says glossary. If you click on it, the definitions will pop up. So maybe that would be helpful for you. Questions about bones, vitamin D, questions about feeding, questions about bowels and constipation. And this is about if there were any drugs and medications or treatments, special treatments that were given. I'm, no, I'm sorry, I'm going so through this so fast. But it's just to give a brief overview. If there's any medications they're taking or supplements, vitamins, etc. Like to know about that. If they've ever had a bad reaction to anesthesia or anyone in the family, how do they respond to hot weather? And this question is about tissue and organ donation, because we will do a separate video about opportunities for that. And that could be either in the uh, event of a death, but also if you had a surgery and any amount of tissue was removed, then that applies to that too. So anyway, we really appreciate you taking the time to answer, to take a look at the questions that are on the registry. And if you have any questions, you can always email the counselor um, at the CMDIR by emailing counselor, that's C-O-U-N-S-E-L-O-R, at cmdir.org. Thank you so much.